Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and you know we all love that monthly cash flow to pay the bills, but monthly dividend stocks are notorious for dividend cuts and crashing stock prices. In a recent video ranking 20 of the top monthly dividend stocks, 15 of the 20 had cut their dividend in the last five years, and some had negative returns, even including the dividends. Now, long term, most of those stocks should rebound, but life doesn't happen in the long term. We live month to month, and sometimes even paycheck to paycheck. So I wanna share five monthly dividend stocks you can count on every month to help pay the bills. Five stocks with an average 9% dividend yield. I'll show you how to find these monthly payers, what I'm looking for, and reveal those five stocks for constant cash flow. We'll start with Gladstone Commercial, ticker G-O-O-D, and it's 9.4% dividend yield. And that might surprise some of you out there. Putting Gladstone on a list of safe monthly dividend payers, a longtime favorite, the Real Estate Investment Trust shocked investors with a surprise cut earlier this year after years of dividend growth. And while that surprise dividend cut did hit confidence in the stock, cash flow is now secure, the dividend is safe, and investors could be in for a strong upside over the next few years. We've seen all real estate stocks get hit, falling 25% last year on those higher interest rates and down more than 6% this year. Now, Gladstone held out longer than most, but had to cut its dividend to protect that cash flow. But investors seem to be forgetting that as interest rates go back down in Fed cuts next year, we could see a repeat of what happened after the 2008 crash. After that year, real estate stocks went on to be some of the best investments over the following years, tripling in value over the next six. Now, Gladstone is a real estate investment trust with over 17 million square feet in industrial and office space for 1.2 billion in assets. Now, that's spread across 135 properties in 19 industries and 27 states. And a return to just where it started this year would be a 30% return on top of that 9% plus dividend yield. So this one is definitely worth the wait. We're just getting started on our list, but I'm also investing my cash to get a 7% yield on Worthy Bonds, a fixed income platform with bonds backed by small business and short-term real estate loans. It's a great supplement to these monthly dividend stocks because it's a fixed rate that you know you're gonna get. You can invest as little as $10 per bond and earn interest on a daily basis. Best of all, you can withdraw all or some of your money anytime with no fees and no penalties. Worthy even has a roundup feature that lets you invest your spare change on purchases into bonds automatically building your portfolio. And just in time for the holidays, a feature to gift bonds to your friends and family. I'll leave a link below to more information. Use the link and you're gonna get an exclusive deal I worked out for everyone out there in the Bowtie Nation. Buy five bonds and get one free. Invest just $50 and get $10 in free bonds. That's a 20% return on top of your 7% interest rate. So look for that link below or just scan the QR code here. Now I haven't covered EPR properties, ticker EPR on the channel that much, but it's a really interesting property type on top of that 7.3% dividend. The company owns almost 360 properties in 44 states and Canada worth over $6.7 billion and leased out to 200 tenants. It's well diversified across entertainment type, though theaters is 39% of the portfolio and that's weighed on the stock over the last five years. EPR has built itself on growing consumer spending for experiences, the things we do to create memories. Americans, especially millennials, are spending more on these experiential outings rather than just to buy things. And this year's $1.2 trillion reached over those pre-pandemic levels. EPR could be a great addition to a portfolio with realty income, that ticker O that is so popular with monthly dividend stock investors. That invests in retail properties, but the ones that sell goods rather than services like EPR. Basically, you're getting both sides of the consumer spending here and a higher dividend yield. EPR has a high occupancy rate of 99% and low turnover on its leases, making for a long-term stable income. Next on our monthly dividend list won't surprise anyone out there in the Bowtie Nation. Main Street Capital, ticker MAIN, with its 7% dividend yield is the top dividend payer in my portfolio. Main Street isn't the highest paying dividend, but it is the most consistent and the most dependable I've found. The dividend hasn't been cut in the last five years and has grown at a steady 3% pace. This one has even produced a positive price return, so dividends and price appreciation. As a business development corporation, or BDC, Maine specializes in loans and equity investments into mid-sized businesses. The company had 182 portfolio investments as of the first quarter, with the largest representing just 3% of its total fair value. So a hit to any of these investments isn't gonna hurt the stock. And a big part of why Maine has been my favorite monthly dividend stock is the yield that it collects on loans is so much higher than its dividend yield. Now I'm gonna detail this next, but with an average yield on its portfolio over 12%, 
it's collecting way more than enough to pay that 7% dividend and reinvest in the business for growth. That not only means dividend sustainability, but also stock price return over time. We've got stocks with double digit monthly dividends coming up, but you need to know what to watch for in these or you get trapped by those dividend cuts and a falling stock price. Nearly half the monthly dividend stocks I follow have cut their dividends by more than 10% a year over the last five, and most have also seen their share price destroyed. Getting stuck in one of these means you're collecting less cash than you expected, but not wanting to sell at a loss, basically screwed any way you look at it. Avoiding that trap can be easy though, so I wanna show you three things you need to look for before buying any monthly dividend stock. First, we'll look at the history of dividend cuts here. You can find this on any platform, but I'll use Yahoo Finance since it's free and available to everyone. We'll go here to the historical data tab, set the time period to the last five years, and then to show dividends only. From there, we can see all the dividends paid every month for that period. Now, one thing you need to watch for here is some of these monthly payers make a special dividend payment each year that is gonna make it look like a cut. For example, with Main Street Capital here, we saw a special dividend paid out in September of this year, December of last, and about once a year over the last five. Overall though, it's been a very stable dividend payment with no big or frequent cuts. Now, one or two dividend cuts don't make it a bad stock. Most of these monthly stocks pay out almost all their earnings as dividends each month, so those payouts can be volatile up or down. It just depends on your cash needs. If you're depending on those dividends to pay your bills, then you're gonna want as few cuts or as little volatility as possible. If you just want those higher yields, then maybe you can overlook a few more cuts if the payment bounces back quickly. You also wanna check for that long-term dividend growth in any stock. In that same dividend history, we can scroll down to the bottom here and Main Street was paying a regular dividend of about 19 and a half cents per share back in 2018. So if we scroll back up, we see the regular dividend is now 23 and a half cents, an increase of 20% over the five years. A dividend growth doesn't have to be double digits because many of these are already paying really high yields, but you don't wanna buy a stock where the payment is constantly shrinking either. And before we get back to the list, you also wanna look for some measure of dividend sustainability to see how well the company is covering its dividend payments. Now this is gonna vary for different types of businesses. For business development corporations or those BDCs, companies that make those loans to mid-sized businesses, you wanna look for what's called the average yield on the portfolio of loans, the interest rate it's collecting. If that is above the dividend yield, it's a great measure for sustainability. For real estate investment trusts though, REITs, then you wanna look for what's called the funds from operation or FFO per share. Now this is the cash flow of the company and you wanna make sure that that's above what's being paid out in dividends. So that dividend payment is fully covered by the funds from operation. Now I'll have to admit, Ellington Financial, ticker EFC, is probably my least favorite of this list, but can still be a good stock and a solid 13.7% dividend yield. Ellington is another BDC and you can see I've highlighted the average yield on the loans for its credit and agency segments. Credit loans are about 76% of the portfolio, but at just under 11%, they don't quite cover that dividend yield. The rate on agency loans is even lower, though the company can use some leverage to still meet those dividend payments without a cut. That dividend has been increasing since 2020, and the shares have actually produced an 8% annual return over the last five, so despite not being as safe as some of the others on this list, it is a good performer. I'll highlight the highest paying monthly dividend stock on the list next, one with a 16% dividend right now. But check out this video here to see which stocks I use to pay the rent. I'll reveal the average rent by state and seven more dividend stocks to pay it. AGNC Investment, ticker AGNC with its 16% dividend yield. It's a tough call here. That high dividend yield is tough to pass up, but the shares have fallen 13% in the last year, and that dividend has been cut twice in the last five. Still though, AGNC is what they call the best house in a bad neighborhood. Now, all the mortgage rates have been hit hard on those surging mortgage rates, but this one has held up relatively well. It's cut the dividend fewer times and by not nearly as much. You can see here other Emirates like Armour and Ellington have cut their dividend by 15 and 26% on an annualized basis, while AGNC has only cut by about 8% annualized. Now a mortgage REIT or Emirate is a special type of real estate company. These REITs borrow money on short-term rates then leverage that up borrowing two or three times as much to invest in longer-term mortgages. When interest rates rise, not only do the borrowing costs increase for Emirates, but all those long-term mortgages they're holding as investments lose some of that value. It's basically a bond portfolio. The upside though is as rates come back down, this effect is gonna work in reverse to boost those shares of memories and AGNC is the strongest of the bunch. The company holds a $61.3 billion portfolio of these mortgages, 91% of that in 30-year fixed rate terms 
and most of that in safe, agency-backed mortgages. So as the mortgage market levels out with those lower rates, we're going to start seeing AGNC shares rise along with the dividend payment. Take advantage of that exclusive offer. Get your free bond and earn 7% on your cash with that link to Worthy Bonds in the description below. Or click on the video to the right for the seven monthly dividend stocks that will pay your rent. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.